Hello, my name is John Sayer, Technical Marketing Manager, Civil Infrastructure here at Autodesk. Today I'd like to take you through virtual reality creation using the AEC collection, what I'm calling VR Level 2, and this is part two of the series. We're going to be talking about land development projects to VR. So let's get started. In part one of this series, we stopped right here in InfraWorks after we had brought in our pipe network as a solid from Civil 3D so that we could see underneath uh, or have it have it show underneath our pavement. All right, I'll show you that real quick. We brought this pipe network in and then we exported out an FBX file so that we can start populating things inside of 3ds Max. All right, so this is what it exported out. So we're going to import each of these FBX files into 3ds Max. So I've got a blank session of 3ds Max open here, so my scene is brand new and fresh. So I'm simply going to start off by just going to File and Import, and I'm going to import my ground from that area. All right. So I'll scroll out to where my my data is at, my data folders. All right, and that's under D. All right, and I can look here at my InfraWorks FBX out folder. I could start here. These five files have got to come in, so I'm going to grab my ground first, and we don't have to change any of the presets, so I'll hit OK, and that FBX file comes in, and it's a good start for us, okay? I'll go ahead and go to File, Import, and I'll do the same thing again for uh, the building, all right? And it'll bring in an FBX of the building that I had on my InfraWorks model. Same thing again. I'll bring in my city furniture. Now the city furniture, if you remember, was my pipe network was actually part of that city furniture. So when it populates, you'll be able to see it here. So not only the cars and the street lamps and things of that nature, but the, the pipe networks themselves as solids. Go ahead and bring in the pipelines. Now I use pipelines to represent my parking stalls. That's just one way of doing it. it. Does a good job doing it that way. So that's that's again, like I said, just it's just a one way of doing those things. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my trees, and then I will be done with my importing. All right, there's only really a couple things we're gonna do here in 3ds Max. We're gonna run that script that I talked about in the last in the last series, the VR to drone series. That script is called the Meshinator. If you would like this script, please email me at John Sayer. S-A-Y-R-E at autodesk.com and I will email you that script. All right, so first thing we're going to save. I'm going to go ahead and save my model. All right, I don't want to I don't want to go any further without saving. I don't like to reproduce work. I'm sure you don't either. So I'm going to go ahead and create my 3DS Max folder. Again, you can call this whatever you want. And I'm just going to call this... Uh, uh, VR level two. Hit save, and it saves my model. Now the script that I was talking about. If you look here, if you'd like to use this data set, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, you can email me about that also. But I've got this in a tools folder. All right, and it's called this Fix InfraWorks Mesh script. So I just drag and drop that on the screen. And I make sure that I go ahead and select everything in my in my scene, and then I can check that I want to clean up all three of these items. Now, again, the hardest part here is just uh, browsing out to where my folder system's at. So I'm going to go out to that same folder system, and I'll create another new folder. I'm going to call this new textures. So if you remember in the last series, I, I talked about that this particular script is going to create the textures with the correct naming convention so it is definitely a time saver rather than trying to build it on your own in 3ds max interactive so I'll, I selected my folder I'm going to just go ahead and hit go and then I'll show you what it's doing here in my new textures folder it is populating all those textures you can see it, it, it repopulates the people everything that needs these textures or actually every texture that's inside of the model, it is renaming it to the right convention. All right. So that's all we do here inside of 3ds Max. I'm going to go ahead and save my model again. And then 
I've opened up 3ds Max Interactive here and we're going to start this off by creating it from a template. All right, so we're going to use this HTC Vive template that they have, and that's what we used before. That's the VR hardware that I have. So I go ahead and select VR HTC Vive and hit Create. And we're going to call this, I'll just call it VR uh, Level 1, and we'll just call it YouTube so that I can differentiate it. It's not Level 1, it's actually Level 2. All right, and I'll choose the directory, and again, i got to scroll back out here to where that's at. And I will create another new folder under there called 3DS Max Interactive. All right, and you can call it whatever you want. I select it and hit OK, and then I hit Create. Now, what it's doing is it's creating a new scene inside of 3ds max interactive and it's applying all of the default information for the HTC Vive so whenever that gets through populating here and I'll show you that whenever it gets through populating and compiling all of the data um, we'll be able to go ahead and create our new level save our new level and we'll be able to bring this information from 3ds max into 3ds max interactive so we'll let it go ahead and compile here real quick now, while that's compiling, I will say this is the same exact process that I used in level one. So what the point I'm trying to make here is, is that this is the same for every VR experience that you have. You can take these steps that we've gone through in VR level one and VR level two, and it's just a difference in data. OK, so we used photogrammetry in VR level one and populated our, our scene in, in 3DS Max with that data. In this particular data set, we used information from Civil 3D, from InfraWorks, so on and so forth, and we are pushing that information across into 3ds Max Interactive from 3ds Max. So we, that's the process. It's the same process every time for bringing in information whenever you're using the AEC collection here. So we'll go ahead and let it finish compiling here. All right, so after it's done compiling and creating our scene from the default template, this is what you will see. This is the VR learning level. All right, we do not want to populate anything in here. All right, we want to create our own new level. All right, so we're going to go up to File, and we're going to drop down to New Level, and it gives us our scene like what we're used to seeing here in 3ds Max Interactive. All right, so once we've created our new level, we want to save that level. And we want to be sure that we save it in the content folder under levels, or we're going to have a hard time finding it later on. And whenever we uh, create a deployment of this, it won't see this level in the deployment because this is the directory it looks for. So we'll just call this, uh, we're going to leave it lowercase, VR level 2. Okay. We'll need to remember this here in a couple of steps that we're going to take here in just a second whenever we tell it what level to default to. Go ahead and hit save. And now we're ready to jump back to 3ds Max, and we can go to the Interactive tab and drop down and select Level Send All. Now in this dialog, we don't have to check anything. We can leave everything default, and you can just hit Send. Now again, it starts flashing on the screen. What it's doing, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, is it's basically creating FBX files and exporting those out. But it, what it does for you is it automatically brings that into 3ds Max Interactive. All right, so it's going to blink on the screen here just a little bit and like I said it's creating FBX files but here in a minute it's going to stop blinking on the screen and it's going to start to populate inside of 3ds Max Interactive and we'll jump over there and start to take a look at what it's bringing in all right now that it's done exporting you can see down here in Windows you can see it's starting to populate there so I'm going to flip back over to 3ds Max Interactive you can see that it's importing those files now it will import the files and then it will compile all of the files. We will have everything that we need uh, in our scene that we had from 3ds Max Interactive. Now, a few things that we need to do still in order for this to be able to be a deployable VR, we need to set our static physics, all right? You can't teleport around unless you set your static physics on everything that's inside the scene. We also need to create a player start. We need to edit our project.lua file, all right? That file is going to house what, well, it houses quite a bit, but 
it actually we're able to tell it where which level that we want to start in if you do not change this it tries to go to the VR learning level and, and your your VR will not work All right so this is key then we need to edit what's called the functionality teleport flow editor and that's so that we can teleport around on everything inside of the model so it does take just a little bit to import these files so after it gets through importing and compiling we'll be able to start off by setting the static physics all right now that we've got all of our information into 3ds max interactive I want to be able to get to my model pretty quickly so navigation inside of 3ds max interactive is a little bit different so first off I'm going to start off by selecting my Explorer tab and it's going to show me all of the units inside of my model I'm just going to pick one of those units all right and I'm gonna hit the F key on my keyboard that zooms me to that unit so once I get to there I can kind of pan down with my right click or I can select my wheel mouse and I can move 360 degree direction but that's the easiest way to get it to take you straight to the model inside of your uh, scene here so be sure just to select one of the units and then hit your F key so the first thing we need to do is we need to create static physics so that we can teleport wherever we want to on this site so I'm going to go here to my asset browser and I'm going to select content and models and I'll scroll down I've got that VR level 2 that was the name of my max file if you do not name your max file it'll just give you a max folder okay all right so I'll select VR level 2 and it'll show me all my units I'll select my first unit and scroll all the way to the bottom hold my shift key down and I will mass select everything right click and I can select enable static physics now like I said in the last video once you select enable static physics it takes it a second for it to kick in and activate meaning it doesn't just start compiling data you can see it right here in the lower right it's compiling that data right now wait for it and let it go ahead and compile data if you think you did not get it selected just wait for it and see if it comes up with this data compiling bar uh, because you don't want to try and do it twice because then it starts to uh, make things redundant once everything is compiled then I can just pick on one of the units here and I like to keep things clean here in my asset browser so I'm gonna just minimize this stuff back up all right now next thing we need to do is we need to create a player start so I'm gonna just grab and rotate this by using my right click button and I'll hit my F key and I did not have anything selected so it's tough to zoom with that if you don't have anything selected now I have something selected and I can hit F and it will zoom to that item all right so let me get see if I can get just a little bit tighter here so let's go ahead and select our player start or create our player start location now what we're going to be looking at here uh, whenever we do that is we're going to select the create tab and we're going to drop down and select player start now I do want to zoom in just a little bit so I can set this pretty accurate because um, if, as you see it's on like a little bit of a grid system so I'm gonna start my player start here this is where it's going to spawn me into the VR so I'm just gonna pick once now I can't stress enough you want to pick once and then hit escape and then pick outside the box somewhere so that it does just place that player start you don't want to select more than once because it'll select two player starts so if you do that by mistake and I do it all the time you can just select one of them and then delete it but I just don't want to have to do that so I just take those precautionary steps and I'm good to go now once I've selected the player start now I want to edit my project.lua file alright so this is where I'm going to tell it what the default level is so I'm going to select my name of my or my project folder I'm going to go to search and I'm going to type in project.lua alright and I will double click on that file and right here where it says default level in row 12 I'm gonna go ahead and take out VR learning I'm gonna type in VR level 2 now this is again why I kept it simple all lowercase and all no spaces and I'm gonna save and I'll close this now once we've done that I want to go ahead and clear my search results or I won't be able to see any of my other files and we're going to need to be able to see those here when we edit our functionality teleport flow editor that's under VR steam in your asset manager models and if I scroll down and I select functionality teleport 
I can click on my flow editor. When it does open, folks tend to get a little nervous because of all these flow nodes that are all connected together. Don't worry. So we're going to just modify one flow node. We're going to zoom in here, and you want to modify under the box check normal for spawn location. So right now it's set to equal. It's equal to one. So anything that is like a 1%, you'll be able to teleport around on, and that's not what we want. So we're going to select equal and hit delete. We're going to right click, go to math, numeric, and greater than or equal to. In the area of B here, the, the value that we're going to give it is 0 0.5. So it's going to react that everything a half percent or greater will be able to teleport around on. That's going to be much better for our situation and pretty much every situation in the VR. So we go ahead and connect Z to A and value to bool. Once we've done that, we can hit file and save. Once it's saved, we move up to the X, it'll be selectable. And I can close it. Now, that's the last thing that we really need to do uh, before we start to make this ground transparent. So this is a good place to stop for part two. So the last thing I could do is I could go ahead and test my environment. So if I hit the player, or I'm sorry, the test level button, it launches the test level. And you'll be able to see it come up here. And I can, I can look at it. So we could just take this straight to and deploy this particular environment right here. Wouldn't have to do another thing to it. But we're going to go ahead and take it to another step in part three. We're going to go ahead and turn the ground transparent. But uh, you'll have to look for part three of this series. So thank you for watching. And I hope you all have a great day.